Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. Today's video we're going to be talking all things GCSE math and not only are we going to be talking about it we're going to actually be doing it because in today's video I've got live exam question walkthroughs for you not one and how to get full marks in GCSE math. Do you do Ed Excel maths or AQA math? You may do OCR. This video applies to all of you because it's basically how to answer the maths to get full marks. So maths was actually one of my favorite subjects during GCSE. I currently take biology, chemistry and maths at A-level and I actually am a key stage three GCSE and A-level maths tutor. Some of the things I'm gonna talk about, I notice in a lot of my students. So hopefully I can help you guys. And I'm not even gonna just give you tips. I'm gonna literally tell you guys how to do it. Okay, so this video is split into four sections to help you find your way around the video. The first part of this video we need to talk about is understanding the math. The thing about maths is not like any other subject. You don't write notes for math. Once you understand the process to answering the question you can apply that process to every maths question one thing about maths is that the exam boards are extremely lazy i say this to all my students they recycle the same question formats and literally just change the numbers change the numbers they change a the word so start thinking to yourself once you've learned the way to do the maths you're able to do the maths on any question truly be delusional it's not really delusional but make yourself believe that i can actually answer every question on this topic once i've seen every example of it okay they're not going to bring a new sort of maths in there the maths is always the same they're just changing the numbers so let's talk resources then the first person i recommend and i personally used him back in 2022 when i was revising for my gcse's and that is the gcse maths tutor what he does is he has a bunch of playlists per topic how do we actually understand the maths and how to use the resources to help you this is how you utilize this video so what he's going to do is he's going to put an example question on the board to start with and he'll just show you how to answer it so what you want to do when you're watching his video is attempt the question literally attempt the question before he does it and when you're at the end of of your attempt watch how he does it is once you know the thought process behind it you're perfectly fine so if you can watch somebody else's thought process which is what the GCSE maths tutor does he shows you his thought process to how he got to the answer then you're able to apply it to when you're trying to answer the question try it yourself first then watch how he does it after another resource you can use I've heard some people talk about it it's cognito the maths is quite basic on there but that's really good if you do foundation math or if you just want to really understand the maths cognito has a website it breaks it all down everyone learns differently so you might find it way easier to learn from the cognito than the gcc maths tutor and the last maths like learning understanding resource i recommend is literally textbooks textbooks have worked examples in there put a couple on the screen that i recommend also you don't have to buy it you can just download the pdf version your school probably have textbooks as well so there are loads of ways to actually understanding the math but once you unlock that first step of knowing the process to do the math the rest of it is easy and i'm going to show you all that later things to take away from this section number one try it yourself and see what is wrong with your thought process number two check it with somebody else's thought process so watch a video walkthrough if you still don't get the math bring the question that's troubling you to your teacher and say can you just show me how to do this like i don't understand what am i missing and you're normally fine when you do that to someone they can show you the gap in your knowledge once the gap in your knowledge is identified then you can go back and fill it in and the last thing you need to take away from this section when you are learning a maths topic think to yourself this is a new skill i'm learning like when you're trying to ride a bike what's another skill i guess riding a bike trying to walk as a baby those are all skills and maths is just like that it's also a skill that's why you don't really write notes for it it has to be developed and how do you develop a skill well you just keep doing it nobody wants to hear oh you have to do practice questions and i would almost argue you don't even have to do practice questions for chemistry oh oh that's a bold statement but like the sciences english and all that stuff you can actually get away with not doing that much questions maths on the other hand oh gosh if you want to get full marks in your gcse maths exam you need to do lots of practice questions and you know what i take back the word lot it doesn't have to be lots of practice questions but every time you do do a pra do do ah, dude. i'm joking i'm joking every time you do a practice more please please if you just give maths 20 minutes every morning or 20 minutes before bed you can literally do maths on the bus i always do that by the way yeah monique oh catch me like i'm monique i do maths on the bus sometimes i do maths before bed sometimes maths in the morning slot in maths random little chunks of maths in a long period of time is what makes you develop the skill of answering a maths question i said it before i'll say it again maths is a skill it needs practice make sure you're doing it frequently and that's how you're going to get better your maths grade is directly proportional to how many questions you do so if you want to get a high grade if you want to get full marks in your first paper one two and three you need to do questions frequently okay frequency is what it is with maths so if you have any questions please comment them down below i hope i haven't missed anything 
the thing I'm about to talk about, this is literally what got me an A star in GCSE maths. And it's literally Maths Genie. You've heard of him before. Maths Genie, Corbett Maths. These are question banks. These are where you can get loads of questions per topic for math. So on the Maths Genie website, he has put all the maths topics in order of grade. Um, so obviously the grade nine maths topics are the more difficult ones. If you work through each of these topics on the website, after you have learned. So you've learned the maths, you know the process. Then you need to go to Maths Genie, bang out the topic questions. Finally on the third part, and this is how to answer maths questions. Step number one to answering a maths question, identify what topic is this question from. Now don't be fooled, sometimes maths love to mix topics together. You have a crazy six mark volume of a cone, or you have a crazy word problem, probability equation. One question doesn't equal one topic. It could be many topics overlapping. The way to eliminate being shocked in an exam, like, oh my God, they're mixing this with this, is by doing more questions. So you've exposed yourself to every way that they like to ask it. Step one, identify, thank you. Step two, two is reading the question carefully. And I mean, picking out those little bits. Step two is basically doing the question. Lastly, you need to go back to what the question asks. So let's try use these three steps to answer. I'm gonna quickly write them here so the first exam question walkthrough we're going to do is a grade five topic so that's for the foundation people if you're in higher i still recommend you watch this section of the video because it's going to help you with just your foundational knowledge so we picked a vectors question i literally picked by random because i could answer any of them um so i thought let's just go for a cheeky little vectors and this question is only three marks so it's relatively simple Okay, so in this question here, we vector OA is 5A. So just to just to show myself what's going on, I'm just going to take this is OA. The question also says that vector OB, they've given me another piece of information. Make sure you read all your information. And it says right here, M is the midpoint of AB. So using that information, I'm going to go back to my diagram. Luckily for us, they already put M on there. If something's the midpoint, that means it's halfway across the line. So how can I represent that? I'm literally going to put a half either side. That means that A to M is half of A to B and M to B is also half of A to B. Part A says find in terms of A and B the vector AB. So I'm trying to get from A to B down the route how you're going to get there. So we can't go straight from A to B because there are no letters represented in going from A to B. So we're gonna go a different route. It's basically, we're still going from A to B, but we're just gonna take a longer route round. Imagine there's just a block in the way. So to get from A to B, I'm gonna go from A to O, and then from O to B. So let's write out the route I just planned. Vector A to B is equal to A to O plus O to B. In the question, we were given O to A and O to B. The problem with this is that I don't have O to A, I have A to O. So instead of going from O to A, I'm actually gonna reverse it, which means I'm going against the arrow. In vectors, when we go against the arrow, we get the negative version of what it was following the arrow. So if you go against it, you're getting negative. So if O to A is 5A, that means that A to O is going to be minus 5A. Then you've got vector O to B. And thankfully, we went with the arrow so we can just write this down. Here's me doing step three. Find in terms of A and B vector A to B. Well, just so that I don't have the negative in front, I'm going to write 3B minus 5A. Part B says find in terms of A and B vectors A to M. As we said a bit earlier, is half of A to B. To represent A to M and R A to B. Thankfully, from part A, I know what A to B is. So I'm just going to write that into the bracket. Sort of expand this. Final answer for a to m 3 over 2b minus 5 over 2a and that would be our final answer last question then in terms of a and b find vector o to m so let's look at our diagram o to m two ways i could get there let's rub out these arrows starting point is now o so i could go from o to b and b to m which is not bad or i could go from o to a and then a to m i'm gonna go for the latter option i'm going from o to a then a to m only because my other question helps me answer it so let's plan it o to a o to a was given in the question so i'm just gonna write five a plus a to m a to m was in our last question. gonna have to simplify i've got five a's here and minus five over two a's here two is just five over two a and as i said b has no like terms so we're gonna leave it like that and there you go three marks foundation vectors question not too bad plan the roots and go for it okay let's try find a juicy harder question uh, should we go for proof grade nine proof grade nine probability higher question i picked a probability question. seven marks so it's quite juicy Let's see if it was in a paper it wouldn't be saying oh this is a grade nine probability question you have to figure it out luckily for you i've told you what it is so you're going to be thinking back to the time you saw somebody working out probability or the time you practiced probability back in your math genie day there are n counters in a bag so straight away especially with chunky questions you want to start labeling what you know 
the n is the total numbers in the bag they said there's n amounts in the bag so there's n amount in the bag the second line of the question says four of the counters are red and the rest are blue all right i'm just ticking it because i've read it i've understood it ross takes a counter from the bag at random and does not replace it okay that looks a bit important he then takes another counter at random from the bag the probability that ross two blue counters is a third show that n squared minus 13n plus 30 equals zero just to visualize it better we're going to do a probability tree how many events are happening here well i can see that there's two events because he takes a counter that's the first time then he takes another one that's the second time so that means two different events are happening they're not independent of each other there's only two colors he could get get a red get a blue then the second time he picked after getting a red he could get another red it's red red or after picking a red he could have got a blue so then he would have got red blue and if he picked blue the first time then the next time he could have picked red or he could have picked blue so that's that's your options and that's your tree okay let's put in some information so i have a value for red i don't have a value for blue the total minus red to get blue which is left over n minus four first branch the probability of picking a red the first time four chances out of n n minus four okay what if i said i'm gonna pick again from this bag he's not replacing it which means we're losing a counter what if he picked a red well if he picked a red again four counters the first time he's taken one away which means there's only three red counters left so the new numerator is going to be three the denominator is also going to change because he's taken away a red counter from the total total is n so it's going to be n minus one what if he picked a blue counter Counter. Well, the number of blue counters hasn't changed. Total counters has n minus 4, n minus 1. If he picked a blue the first time, probability of him picking a red the second time. And then for blue, you've already lost the blue, so you have one less blue. So n minus 4, minus 1, n minus 5. I feel like I over explained that, but I want it to be really clear. Two marks already. It says the probability that Ross two blue counters is a third. So what's the probability of Ross taking a blue blue? Well, we're going to look at our tree. Our tree is going to help us here. This is the branch you're going to look at. n minus 4 over n is n minus 5 over n minus one we're going to times them together now we have a different skill so it's algebraic fractions but you can still act like it's normal n minus four times n minus five over n times n minus one we've got brackets here so we can just expand it on the top n squared minus five n minus four n plus 20 if you collect the like terms you get n squared minus nine n plus 20 we know that will simply expand to n squared minus n let's not forget this is equal to a third they gave us this in the question we have two fractions this is another skill we have two fractions that are being equated to allow us to just cross multiply the fractions we're going to times that by three remember you didn't have to expand it up there some people just like to see it clearer some people don't like brackets so i just expanded it for the people that don't like brackets like that's equal to n squared minus n i've got more brackets i'm going to expand them three n squared minus 27 n plus 60 is equal to n squared minus n. So now I can see there's a squared. I know there's gonna be some quadratics involved. I'm gonna move over everything to the other side so that my quadratic can equal zero. Minus n squared on both sides and add n on both sides. We're gonna get two n squared minus 26 n plus 60 is equal to zero. This whole thing can be divided by two. So n squared minus 13 n plus 30 is equal to zero we just answered part a we have shown that n squared minus 13 n plus 30 equals zero so we've definitely got five more and the last part is just solving for n so to solve we have to factorize we need to think of two numbers that times to give you 30 and add to give you minus 13 that is going to be minus 3 and 10 so bracket minus 3 bracket minus 10 is equal to zero so n equals 3 and n equals 10 however and this is really important this is find the value of n not multiple n's you can only have one answer so what do we do well let's look at the question we have an equation n minus four um so if i put three into that equation i'm gonna get minus one and i'm pretty sure we can't have minus one of a counter the only answer that makes sense is n is equal to 10 because 10 minus four gives you six so that is a valid answer yeah just write a little reasoning saying n can't be less than four and there you go seven marks in that higher question honestly not too bad and that's kind of how you go about answering a math question there's not much to say in this video apart from you need to practice so when you finish video click off this video head to math genie and try the topic question okay that is all for this gcse maths video i pray that helps you and get in full marks so yeah if you want another one of these videos geography the sciences in rm math biology, uh, drama i also got a stars in them just let me know love you guys all so much and i will see you in my next video click off this video and start doing your maths questions bye uh.